Clean. Senator Menendez of New Jersey is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Ms. Bailey. The National Low How Income Housing Coalition's 2023 Out of Reach report showed just how hard it is for low income renters to afford even modest housing. In my state of New Jersey, a medium income renter is barely able to pay for a one bedroom yeah. home. The fact is that there aren't enough rental homes being built. And part of that is because federal lending programs like HUD and the Federal Housing Administration haven't kept pace with the market. Ms. Bailey, is it true that FHA's multifamily loan limits haven't been adjusted since 2003? Yes, that is true. Because the limits haven't been updated in so long, over two decades, even after adjustments for inflation and higher cost areas, FHA multifamily financing simply isn't a viable financing tool in many parts of the country anymore. Would you say that these limits pose one of our challenges to HUD and FHA meeting its mission to provide decent, safe, and sanitary housing? Absolutely. The key thing to understand is rarely is it one tool that we use to build any multifamily development. It takes multiple tools to build just one affordable housing development. So whether with the low-income housing tax credit, um, the loans through HUD, the uh, home program, community development block grant dollars, all of that has to work together, but none of them were actually created to work together. So it's really important to reform things um, in order, so to make things align better, and that's one of the, and that's definitely necessary with the lending program. I appreciate that. That's why I introduced a bill to, for today's hearing that would modernize FHA's ability to finance multifamily housing construction around the country. It's a simple common sense proposal that would, among other things, update FHA's lending ability to accurately reflect the increase in construction costs over the past 20 years. And I, I think this is one element of the supply side that Dr. Antoni was talking about. Uh, flooding is one of the most uh, frequent and most expensive natural disasters impacting homes in the United States. And while 40% of Americans live in coastal counties, just 4% percent of Americans have a flood insurance policy. Ms. Bailey, isn't it true that low-income families disproportionately face increased flood risk? That is true. Um, too many developments are in the floodplain. And so while FEMA has long struggled to keep premiums affordable in the National Flood Insurance Program and with growing flood risk due to climate change, I worry that many families face an impossible choice of being overburdened with housing costs or foregoing insurance for the most important financial asset, which is their home. And the cost of flood insurance is directly tied to the affordability of home ownership, especially if your mortgage provider requires coverage. So if you cannot get flood insurance because it is unaffordable and the marketplace is just not taking care of it on its own, uh, and you need it in order to get your mortgage, which most mortgage companies or banks require, uh, then you are locked out. And so that's why our bipartisan NFIP REACT, which creates an affordability voucher program, uh, is uh, incredibly important. I hope we can get to um, a pathway forward on that. Finally, uh, affordable housing is increasingly located in areas that are far away from job centers, forcing workers to pay higher transportation costs or work fewer hours. According to one analysis, workers are spending $2,000 and 39 hours more per year on commuting than before the pandemic. Housing cannot be affordable unless people are able to get to work where they live, which is why I led the charge with my Livable Communities Act, which creates a federal grant program to incentivize the development of new affordable housing near existing mass transit. Mr. Joseph, can you explain how critical it is that we keep other costs like transportation in mind when developing affordable housing? Uh, yes, sir, and that was a great bill to support. It was, um, uh, I think, uh, uh, providing more opportunities to build near transit is critical. It's saving the family uh, commuting times, and when you're lower income and paying for childcare, uh, every every 15 minutes, every half hour definitely counts. You're reducing emissions. Uh, it just makes so much more sense to build near those, and we particularly appreciated that you, you would require 25% of the funding in high poverty communities. So yeah. it's a great idea. It, it, is, it is an opportunity to take the infrastructure that exists, maximize it, and create greater opportunities for people uh, to be able to work successfully 
and spend less of their disposable income on transportation and related costs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Menendez. 